is it more discriminatory to require a business owner to serve a client against the dictates of his or her conscience or to allow the business owner to not serve said client based on their conscience? Well, that is the question that I would like to explore for a couple of minutes. I don't want to make a really long opinionated video about this, but um, also the current, uh, the state of Washington is currently exploring this question, and it comes into uh, play where a um, floor shop is being potentially sued by the state of Washington for not serving a uh, member of a same-sex couple who are planning on getting married and wish to have the services of the floor shop um, in terms of catering at that wedding. In the state of Washington, according to the recent law that was passed that allowed same-sex marriages, religious organizations such as churches can still refuse, based on conscientious grounds, they can still refuse to marry a same-sex couple that is requesting uh, marriage in their church. However, business owners are not covered under this religious exemption. So if a business owner has a um, religious affiliation um, or a conscientious objection to serving uh, a, at a, a wedding ceremony for a same-sex couple, even though that's against the dictates of their, of their conscience, they can be sued or prosecuted by the state. It's important to note that in this situation, this is not about discrimination against gays or homosexuals. As a matter of fact, the florist shop owners, the proprietors of Arlene's Flowers, were accepting um, of gays. Um, they had uh, formerly had gay employees. They served gay customers. But where they drew the line, according to their own religious um, religiously based conscientious objection where they drew the line according to the dictates of their conscience was preparing and catering flowers for a same-sex wedding. It is critical to grasp that point. So it's not about discrimination based on sexual orientation. It's about following the dictates of your conscience or potentially being punished by your state for following your conscience. Now, in this case, there may be just a simple confusion at the heart of the uh, proposed fine or prosecution of the florist shop by the state of Washington. It appears that the attorney general in Washington is stating the case that the case is based on discrimination against sexual orientation. Now, that is not the case according to the facts of the report. Um, the reports that have been given so far um, state this is not. Obviously, they um, had regular homosexual customers that they served. They were just objecting based on their own conscience to performing or serving at a same-sex marriage. So they're objecting to a specific expression of homosexuality, namely blessing a union of a same-sex couple in a uh, in a uh, blessing it in a public and formal way, um, the way that we do at weddings. So, are they allowed to follow the dictates of their conscience, or are they forced to disobey what they believe? Um, traditionally, America, with its civil liberties and freedoms, has upheld um, the rights of individuals to follow their conscience. Um, so in th this would be highly unusual uh, for the state to be prosecuting at this point. Well, according to the Attorney General's case, they are attempting to prosecute Arlene's Flowers, who did not serve this homosexual couple in the particular way of celebrating a public wedding. They are pursuing the case against them based on discrimination against sexual orientation. Now that um, will definitely factor into the case um, since it does not appear that the proprietors of the store were discriminating based on sexual orientation. They were simply refusing to perform their services in a specific public format. As William Lane Craig has pointed out, 
the enforcement of traditional marriage laws in the United States of America does not discriminate against sexual orientation. It is not about your sexual preference or your sexual orientation or your sexual lifestyle. It is simply about the union of opposite genders, one member of opposite genders, male and female. That is what is traditional. Um, there are uh, couples who are uh, of opposite genders who may have any sort of sexual orientation who still uh, marry under the law with the blessing of both the church and the state. So it appears that the Attorney General of the state of Washington really has her work cut out for her. Um, if she's going to try to make the case that the florist shop was discriminating based on sexual orientation, then she has to show more, much more, than simply the fact that the shop refused to cater at a publicly held venue or wedding um, the marriage of a same-sex couple. Um, the florist shop owner wasn't, uh, was not um, against a person being gay. That was not the reason why they refused to serve. As a matter of fact, they had already served that particular customer. I believe the name was Robert Ingersoll. Um, they had already served him in the past. It was just about a specific public celebration that was would constitute a violation of that person's conscience, the person, the, the owner of the store. So really the Attorney General has to show, um, if she's going to try to make the case that it's about sexual discrimination or about discrimination against sexual orientation, um, that the uh, store owner had suddenly changed their position on homosexuality from in the past um, serving openly homosexual customers to not serving openly homosexual customers. And that does not seem to square with the facts in this case. I'll just read you the um, facts of the case as they're presented by Tony Perkins, but he has, after a long time business relationship with an openly gay customer, Stuntsman now finds herself in Benton County Superior Court fighting for her rights. When her client, Robert Ingers Ingersoll, stopped by Arlene's Flowers in March to make arrangements for his upcoming wedding, Baronel kindly told him that she couldn't help. As a Christian, she explained, she objected to same-sex, quote, marriage on moral grounds. Robert said he respected her opinion, and the two hugged and parted ways. And now um, they, the flower shop faces the lawsuit from the state, uh, from the Washington State Attorney General, uh, who is suing the shop for sexual discrimination. Now, one really has to ask oneself if it's worth, worth sacrificing the, uh, relig the priority of religious objection to performing something that's clearly against one's faith. So is it worth it to sacrifice, to surrender and uh, squash that right based on a, um, an opinion or a perception that um, all business owners ought to serve any and all clients whatsoever. So really, it's it's as though commercialism is trumping um, the dictates of one's conscience, and that that seems pretty unprecedented. And I I think that would be a pretty difficult case to make uh, for the attorney general to try to state that um, this is a form of sexual discrimination, particularly when the shop has clearly served. Uh, without any problems or issues, clearly served um, homosexual customers, including the, the very gentleman, um, in this case, Robert Ingersoll.